Good evening and welcome again to Local Politics COVID-19 style. Uh, this evening, Norton Cable Access Corporation is pleased and proud to sponsor a debate for those seeking the office of select board in the town of Norton. My name is Bill Gouveia. I'm a columnist for the Sun Chronicle and a longtime resident and former town official in Norton. And I will serve as the moderator for the debate. Norton Media Center is part of a nonprofit corporation run by the Norton Cable Access Commission. That commission is appointed in part by the select board and made up of Norton residents who bring you local and public access programming. The funds to operate the studio and bring you programming such as this come from a portion of your cable bill. The purpose of this debate tonight is to allow you, the citizens and voters, to hear directly from the candidates seeking to represent you. We hope you will use any information and insights you may gain as part of your decision-making process when you go to the new polling place, the Norton Middle School, on Saturday, September 12th. I know we voted there once now, but for a lot of people, that's still a new polling place. So you're going to hear a new polling place mentioned prominently during the night that it, uh, if you are voting in person, the new polling place is the Norton Middle School. And it'll be on Saturday, September 12th. Uh, so do not go where you've gone in prior years. Now, as you can see, tonight's debate is a little different from what you may be accustomed to. And that's because the world is a little different today than what we've all been accustomed to. Uh, the COVID-19 virus and the health emergency rules have forced us to do these debates via Zoom. Uh, Ms. Sandy Allerhead has generally offered to handle the technical part of this, um, and uh, we're very grateful for that. While Jason Benjamin and Shane and their Crack Norton Media Center do their usual fantastic job of actually bringing the pictures to you. Each candidate, <clears throat> before we introduce our, our candidates for select board, let me briefly outline the rules for this evening, which have been agreed to in advance by both candidates. Each candidate will get no more than three minutes to make an opening statement. They will go in order in, in the order decided by a coin flip prior to the debate. After opening statements, the candidates will be asked a question by me. All the questions come from me and no one other than me has seen, read, heard, or had anything to do with the questions before tonight. So if you really hate the questions, it's all my fault. Each candidate will have no more than three minutes to answer the questions, and all candidates will be asked the same question. After the last candidate is answered, each will get no more than one minute for rebuttal. After the last question, candidates will be given no more than three minutes to make a closing statement. Again, they will go in the order determined by a drawing before the debate. The time for each candidate will be kept by the moderator. Uh, when only 15 seconds remain, I will tell the candidates their time is expiring. If they do not end in time, it will be my job to politely stop them to ensure fairness for all. With that said and done, let's now move to the forum for select board. There are two challenges uh, this year, seeking to replace retiring select board member Michael Flaherty, who was chased out of, I mean, who, who moved, uh, moved, Mike moved, you gotta remember, who, who moved out of town. We thank Mike very much for his, for his service. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce the candidates. Our first candidate is Mrs. Meg Arts. Meg, welcome to the debate. And next to her is our, is candidate Mr. Joe Parker. Uh, candidates, welcome to the North Media Center debate. And now, in accordance with our coin flip, we will begin our opening statements and uh, Mrs. Arts will go first. Thank you, Bill. Um, good evening, Norton. Uh, my name is Meg Arts. I'm thrilled to be running for select board. First, I'd like to thank the Norton Media Center for sponsoring this debate and for Bill um, for moderating and for Sandy I just met. Um, thank you for the tech support. Um, I know it's been extremely difficult uh, to let voters know who I am and what I'm about during COVID-19. Uh, social media is great, but it's not able to reach everyone. Um, so hopefully after tonight, you'll have the ability to include more voters in this process and we'll have a lively discussion. Um, 
those that don't know me, let me give you a little bit of background. Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. I grew up in northern New Jersey. I spent 10 years in Washington, D.C. for college and graduate school. I worked on Capitol Hill, I studied politics at Catholic University um, and government at Johns Hopkins University. I moved to Boston in 1998 after accepting a job um, in development at Harvard University. I met my husband, Jim, in 2000. We married a year later, bought our first home together in Norton in 2002. We still live in that same home and have three children, uh, JD, who's going to be a junior, and Jake, who's going to be a seventh grader, and Maddie, who's going to be in the sixth grade. Um, Pre-pandemic, my job required extensive travel. Um, I always wanted to get involved locally, but literally had no time um, and was not present a lot. So um, small silver lining with the, with the pandemic, I now have time. Um, I've spent my entire career in development and fundraising for nonprofits. Um, in my line of work, it's extremely important to listen carefully to what the donors want. And it's imperative that I'm able to provide leadership and negotiate effectively. Um, I must be transparent, uh, creative, nimble, just to name a few. Um, and so these are some of the qualities I believe will bring a fresh perspective to the select board. Um, so I'm excited to be part of this and um, look forward to the debate. trying to remember to unmute myself, which I'm not really good at muting myself. So thank you very much, Meg. We appreciate that. And Mr. Parker, uh, it is your turn. Please go ahead with your opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Gavea. Um, like Meg, I want to thank the Norton Media Center uh, and thank Meg for, uh, for taking the time to uh, have the debate this evening. I'd also like to thank everyone from Norton who's watching, and I'm glad you're taking the time to hear from us and make an informed decision. Uh, my name on the ballot is going to be Frank Joseph Parker, uh, but my friends call me Joe, and I hope that you will too. Um, the nature of the debate is that we're going to spend a lot of time tonight talking about what's wrong with Norton, but I want to take a moment for a simple statement, which is Norton's a great town. There's not too many places that you find that combine quiet, safe living with the amenities and convenience of two nearby large cities. I have great neighbors, and I've seen this community pull together to do some really great things, especially during the COVID-19 uh, situation that we have going on here. I love Norton, and if I didn't, I wouldn't be devoting a considerable amount of time and energy to running for office and then hopefully serving on the select board as your uh, new selectman. I decided to run because I feel like Norton is at a crossroads. We've got budget challenges, but at the same time, we desperately need new facilities. We've got lingering water issues. And then there's the huge question of whether we as a town want to change our form of government. There's a lot of work in front of us, and we need to look to the future and plan, not just for next year or the year after, but for the next 5, 10, and 20 years. Time and again, whether it be at Open Town Meeting, at our elections, or in the discussions that I hear and see, people get bogged down on the problems of today. And while we have to address those problems today, we can't focus solely on those. There's a bigger picture that we can't lose sight of. I think the current select board is doing a great job. They're working for the people of Norton, doing their best to increase efficiency and improve transparency. And there's a momentum building. I, I believe I have the skills and drive needed to help keep it going. And I hope I can convince you of that in this debate. These are uncertain times that require leaders that can effectively work with others, that can understand what the challenges are and the importance of planning for them. Those leaders also have to be flexible as situations change. And I think our situation earlier this year is a prime example of that. No one was expecting that. Every day, my job as a product manager for a software company takes into consideration all of those very things. My job in a nutshell is to work with customers to understand what their needs are, to set requirements that walk the fine line between what the customer wants and what the company needs to achieve to, to meet our plans, and to prioritize all those based on the resources we have. And we never have enough resources. And maybe that sounds familiar because it's really the same thing that we're facing here in town. You can replace customer with citizen, and uh, town with company, and we're talking about the same things. When I was asked why I wanted to uh, run for select board rather than some of the other boards here in town, it's the answer was that. I think my skills are the best match to what's needed for this board. I don't claim to have everything figured out, um, but what I'm good at is working with teams with, who have different goals and different priorities, getting them to work together towards a common purpose, and it's the same thing here. So I hope to earn your vote. Because while I don't have all the answers, I believe if we work together, we can find them. 
Thank you very much, Joe, Mr. Parker. And with that, we will now go into our, our questions. And in keeping with our agreement, our first question, both candidates will answer the same question. We'll, we'll begin the first answer uh, with Mrs. Arnes. Uh, so, Mrs. Arnes, without a doubt, one of the most important things in Norton will be deciding in the, that we will be deciding in the next year is whether or not to accept the new town charter. The preliminary charter, which is still subject to change, has been out for a while now, and I'm assuming you've both seen it. What is your opinion of the charter proposal, which eliminates both the select board and the open town meeting, and do you support it? Uh, yes, I actually, um, I was thrilled to read the actual uh, information. I think when we've grown as a town, we can't, we can't run business as usual the way it was run 100 years ago. Um, and I think it's important uh, to have, um, you know, to combine some of our resources and some of our committees um, in a way that we can do better structural planning. So the, the comment uh, the, as part of the report when they want to take the Water and Sewer Commission and make it a make the public works um, division, I think it's essential. We can't have these fractions. If we look at, I think about how um, Norton is set up as a town in terms of how we govern, it, it's similar to how the town looked aesthetically. We have these, the, all different parts of town that you wouldn't know you're in the same community. And I think um, the same holds true for how, how we govern. Um, we all work in our different silos. And I think um, it's critical that we come together and um, have a better opportunity to um, work together as a community. Um, so I am absolutely all for it. Um, I'm excited about it. I hope. Um, well, the work that the committee did, and Joe, I know your wife was a big part of this. Um, I commend them for their time and their effort. Um, and this is sort of the thoughtful planning that I think we need to start doing in um, everything that we think about, um, from you know, all the rezoning laws and all that. I think um, to take nine volunteers and give all that time to put something together, I thought was a, it was a great thing. Um, and I'm thrilled and I'm excited that Norton's moving a little bit into the future. Um, and hopefully we'll see some great, great opportunities come out of it. So I'm excited. Thank you, Mrs. Arts. And Mr. Parker, same question to you. Uh, without a doubt, one of the most important things Norton will be deciding in the next year is whether or not to accept the new town charter. The preliminary charter, which is subject to possible change, has been out for a while now, and I'm sure you've both seen it. Uh, what is your opinion of the charter proposal, which eliminates both the select board and the open town meeting, and do you support it? I, I absolutely support it. Um, you know, I've, I've read it from cover to cover uh, in preparation for the uh, public hearing that we had on that and, and wanted to hear what people had to say in terms of their opinions on it. I know, Mr. Gavay, you weighed in uh, on that as well. Um, I agree with Mrs. Arts on, on this one. Um, you know, not only have we grown as a town and, and probably outgrown uh, the open town meeting form of government, um, the challenge I think I have with open town meeting is that, again, we've grown beyond it. We have so many people that, that want to be involved and would love to, to take the time in order to participate in those things. Um, but it's a time commitment, and you know, I, I find that people, even the people who do come, um, often are not particularly prepared. Uh, they're seeing the warrant and the articles for the very first time as they walk through the door. It's just virtually impossible for anyone, even if they want to be involved in town government, to keep track of all of the, the boards and committees and decisions and so on that, that have to go on. Um, and while you know, while many people will say that open town meeting is the purest form of democracy and I, I tend to agree with that it only works if everyone has access to it so i think the, the change to uh, town council is a big one uh, and you know, I, I fully support that thank you mr parker 
Uh, Mrs. Arts, anything you'd like to add in, uh, you know, anyone? Hold on a second, we're not getting you. We need to unmute you here. No, we're still not getting you. Can we unmute, uh, can you unmute yourself there? Technical difficulties here. Hold on one second. Thank you. I got okay, it. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Go ahead, Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Sorry, go this ahead. is like very stressful. Not with my husband. You helped me out here. My kids weren't around, so I told them to, I wanted them to be quiet. Um, no, I, I, I agree again. I think Mr. Parker and I were on the same page on this. Um, I just want to reiterate when you said the open town meeting, which was this sort of flashback. So when I had 1.3 kids under the age of five and I'm working full time and traveling, um, if I was in town and could attend the town meeting, we would, but then there was the whole, you know, we would have to get, you know, daycare issues and, and it was just it was such a challenge. Um, and like I said, you know, I studied politics and government and other things that I, that I did. I worked on you know, lobbying groups and worked in Capitol Hill. And it's taken me, I've been here 18 years, and just to get understand how Norton worked has been a challenge. So I, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity for some change. Thank you, Mrs. Arts and Mr. Parker. Anything you'd like to add in, in one minute here? I, I think just uh, in the, the one minute, the one thing I'd like to remind those who are watching is that the Charter Commission is an elected board uh, and it's the only way that we're able to change our form of, of town government. Um, if you're in favor of a change of form of government, even if you're not in favor of some of the details that are in there, I would still strongly suggest you support the Charter Commission because the only way to, to make that change later would be to go through this elected process with another two year process to, to make a proposal and so on. Um, so, you know, this is this is really our big chance if you're in, in support of a change of government in order to make that happen. Thank you very much, Mr. Parker. And we'll go to our second question. And this one, we will begin with Mr. Parker. Um, Mr. Parker, the last proposed plan for a new senior center and a new town hall turned into a disaster with contaminated land, a no vote at town meeting, and a canceled override election. There is now a plan being proposed to buy land and build both a town hall and a senior center, costing many millions of dollars. Is this something the town should be considering at this time of budget uncertainty, fueled in large part by the coronas, uh, by the uh, coronavirus pandemic? I actually believe it is something that we should be considering. Um, as I mentioned in my opening statement, those buildings are in desperate need of, of an overhaul. Um, there's a couple points I want to bring up here. One is that if we were to do the debt exclusion for these two buildings, uh, by the time we get the proposal put together, it goes to a, a vote. All the bidding and, and uh, you know design and everything else that goes along with it happens, and we actually get to the point of the project being finished. We're looking at 2023 or later, and the bills don't come due until that point in time. We're going to be, God willing, looking at COVID-19 in long in our rearview mirror by the time that that comes. Um, the Another thing that I think that people don't really take into consideration is if we don't go forward with this, then we need to find a way to repair and improve our current town hall and current senior center. The cost of that is not nothing. Um, estimates that I've heard so far, even just for the town hall, is upwards of six to eight million just to make the town hall code compliant. That doesn't even take into consideration any kind of uh, additional space that we might need for offices or, or any type, type of growth that we might need to do. Um, so, you know, I, I'm strongly in favor of this. I think people need to, to take that into consideration. Um, we need to, to do what is best for the town in general. Uh, and, and, you know, I understand taxes in, increasing is, is painful, but um, for the average household, the estimates that I've heard for the, uh, the debt exclusion would come to about the cost of one cup of coffee per week. Uh, and I know that there are, are people in town that are definitely on lower income and don't have the money for that one cup of coffee per week, um, but their tax burden is also on the lower side of that as well. So I think we have to seriously think about this. Uh, if not, we're going to run into a really desperate situation. Thank you, Mr. Parker. 
Uh, Mrs. Art, same question to you. Uh, the last proposed plan for a new senior center and new town hall turned into a disaster with contaminated land, a no vote at town meeting, and a canceled override election. There is now a plan being proposed to buy some land and build both a town hall and a senior center, uh, costing many millions of dollars. Is this something the town should be considering at this time of budget uncertainty fueled in large part by the coronavirus pandemic? Um, well, I agree and I disagree with what Mr. Parker is saying. Um, I do believe that we do need um, buildings that aren't falling down and, and are up to code and, um, and certainly you know, we have a prominent um, senior community here that want you know, this is this is their home just as much as it is everyone else's home um however you know i'm sort of this is how again when i talked about how our town right now is so fractioned um i think it's important that we don't do things in a silo and i think that you know, there's all this talk about the village um center and thinking about you know all the rezoning that's going to happen and how we're going to what our footprint is going to look like. And I just think by taking these two things at this moment, um, without lining it all up together, I think, um, I think we end up in the same position that we were before. And I think this is where we're going to run into issues. So I'm not saying I agree. And I think we need to do this. We need a lot of things I think we need to do. Um, but I also think maybe we're putting the cart before the Maybe we need to think about, um, which is one of the things I'm really interested in, is you know, economic development within, within Norton. The fact that Roach Brother, the, the grocery store, is now gone, um, and we had this almost empty sort of strip mall, if you will, um, we need to think about before we start building and raising taxes and all that, because um, you could build all this great stuff, but who going to come when the taxes are really high and there's all these vacant buildings around town. So I just think we need to, to put a little bit of a pause. Um, we are in the middle of a pandemic. People, you know, this is not, um, again, I, I'm not saying put it off for um, forever, but I think it just needs to be done in a thoughtful, collaborative way. Um, so I'm in favor. I think I want the town to, you know, to be high functioning and beautiful. And um, but I think we just need to really think about the impact um, and how it's going to fit in with all the other things that we're trying to do. Thank you, Mrs. Arts and Ms. Parker. Anything you'd like to add in a one minute rebuttal? Uh, yes. So, you know, as I mentioned before, I, I strongly disagree with, with that. I, I don't see any reason that we can't look at economic development at the same time that we're going through the plans uh, for these buildings. That process takes a long time. I know our, our EDC, formerly IDC, uh, is looking at ways to, to bring in um, more revenue in terms of you know, marijuana overlays and things like that that we, we do need to vote on at uh, the next town meeting, which unfortunately got delayed. Uh, but my my concern is is that if we look at these one after the other then things get pushed out way too far we have the capability with the different uh, groups and, and uh, boards in town to be able to look at these things at the same time and come up with a, a, a comprehensive plan that will let us address all of these issues in a thoughtful way definitely uh that we, that we want to, to happen um when i listened in to the uh, public hearing that was held for the these uh, senior center and town hall, there was a lot of support for this. Um, I didn't actually hear anyone saying that we didn't need it. So I think this is something that the town wants. We do have to think seriously about how we fund it, but I also think that we have other programs in place that uh, will help us get there. Thank you very much, Mr. Parker. Uh, Mrs. Arts, anything you'd like to add in one minute rebuttal? Um, no, I, again, I, I think we're we're agreeing that we're disagreeing. Um, there's certain, um, again, I, I don't think we're disagreeing. I think we're sort of saying the same thing. However, um, I just think it would be, um, given the, the, the pandemic and given what's going on, I think it's wise for us to have the opportunity to, um, to really think about the 
being fiscally responsible about this and the funding of it. I just, it worries me that we're going to continue to go down this path of, um, you know, always looking for an override or always looking for that, you know. Um, so I, I just, I, I just want to, like I said, I just think we need to be more thoughtful about this. Um, 100% agree. It's so needed. Um, town hall is, you know, like I said, we all know it's, it's not what it needs to be. It's not um, compliant. Um, so I'm all for it. I just, I just think I want to do it, you know, hold a little bit so we can get arms around where we're going to be this day. Thank you, Mrs. Arts. And we'll now go to our next question. And this question, we will start off with Mrs. Arts. <clears throat> Mrs. Arts, the, the attitude of the town towards new businesses has long been a controversial topic. There are several zoning articles on the warrant of the town meeting that was postponed last week until September 26th. What is your stance on those articles in particular? And how would you as a select board member help encourage increasing the industrial commercial tax base when there always seems to be so much neighborhood opposition regardless of the location? Yeah, no, and, and again, this goes back to the, um, for those who remember the NIMBY, not my backyard, um, you know, we're always going to be challenged in terms of different um, views and what, um, whether we bring in industry or we don't. Um, and I'd like to take it even a little step further beyond just the commercial industry that we were talking about um, and the industrial park. You know, again, just look at all the vacant buildings. Um, so, I think, again, it goes back to the planning and, you know, bringing a village center or some kind of core or hub in the town of Norton. Um, look at any great um, town surrounding here. Look at, um, I've looked at a lot of different amazing places um, throughout my life. Um, and they all center around a, a center of town. So I think we need to sort of start there. I know the rezoning, they're thinking about, um, how that footprint with the commercial and residential are all going to make sense. Um, but I think, again, at the end of the day, this is about what the town wants and what the um, residents want. It's not about what, what Megan Arts wants. It's about um, hearing and letting the people decide. Um, and there's going to be, you know, challenges with that. We got to, we have to as a town, Regardless of where you fall into, whatever side you fall onto, you have to learn a better method of civil discourse. Um, we've become so divided since I've been here. It sort of amazes me, like, um, and I don't know if it's sort of just the world we're living in, and everyone's a lot more stressed and all that. But we have to come. We have to be able to have um, better dialogue and civil discourse about what the community. What we want to look like um, and you know these are conversations and this is what what the residents of Norton are going to ultimately want. Thank you very much Mrs. Arts and Mr. Parker same question to you the attitude of the town towards new business has long been a controversial topic there are several zoning articles on the warrant of town, of town meeting that was postponed last week until September 26th. What is your stance on those articles in particular? And how would you as a select board member help encourage increasing the industrial commercial tax base when there always seems to be so much neighborhood opposition regardless of the location? Thanks for the question, Bill. Um, I definitely support the EDC's plan to bring the marijuana industry to town. I believe it would be a boon to us with, with very little downside. And the reason that I think that is the state guidelines are extremely stringent. The EDC has worked hard to ensure that the locations uh, make sense for our residents. There's a lot of site plan and special perm permitting uh, that, that is required by the town. The permitting itself brings in some extra money as well. Uh, and there's industry specific taxes on top of all the normal rates, uh, making it really even much more lucrative for the town than a normal business. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm very much in favor of that. Uh, I'm also in favor of the village commercial core. Um, I know that's a long term plan. One of my concerns when I saw it was that, you know, it could take us 
15, 20, 25 years in order to really start seeing uh, some, some results from that. But um, I think, you know, we've got to start somewhere and be able to take a stand, um, put, put a, a flag on the ground and say, all right, this is where we're going to start. Um, like, like Mrs. Arts, I want to see the empty lots and storefronts along 123 and 140 be full. Um, you know, a lot of those storefronts don't need any kind of, of zoning change in order to, to be there. So what that's really going to require is outreach to both our, our citizens in general, um, as well as to the planning board. And I think, um, when Mr. Tool was running for a select board, he talked about uh, bringing back the strategic plan. I'm fully in favor of that. Uh, and I think we need to sit down with the planning board and, and have a discussion about what their vision is for the town as well um, and see what we can work on together to, uh, to make sure that we're in lockstep uh, and, and moving in the same direction. As I mentioned in my opening statement, that's one of the, the skills that I have is bringing those towns, uh, those groups together that you know may have very differing uh, views on things and uh, you know, kind of getting them to, to work together and come up with a, a mutually beneficial uh, solution so thank you mr parker and mrs arts uh anything you'd like to say in the one minute rebuttal yeah i just again you know it, i'm a little disappointed that um that we are turning to, to alternative ways to bring in revenue, um, whether you know whether for or against the marijuana um, you know, stores. To me, it's we have buildings that are just been sitting there for all this time, and I feel um, sort of frustrated. Olympia Sports used to be in that Roach Brothers Plaza um, in New Dallas 15 years ago. Um, so I feel that there's so much in that's been happening um, in town about you know where can we get more revenue, where can we get more revenue? We haven't even like stopped to sort of like have conversations with them. Whoever owns that Roach Brothers Plaza, like they, they need to have a conversation with them to say, hey, listen, let, let, let's start thinking about you know, tax incentives and tax breaks for some of these businesses. If we had done that with Roach Brothers, we'd be making more in tax revenue than we would if they're not there. Um, so I, I just like us to be a little bit more creative. Again, it's sort of my professional, but also my personal skill set. You know, having three children, you sort of learn how to make everyone uh, play nice in the sandbox, if you will. Um, and I want to be able to do that here. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mr. Parker, anything one minute for you? Yeah, thanks. Um, so Gator Properties, the, the company that owns the Roach Brothers Plaza, um, you know, I, I'm sure that they want that plaza to be full. Um, uh, it would be silly for them and a bad investment for them to do that. But I think part of the problem is is the, the reputation that Norton has as being business unfriendly. And until we make moves to start to change that reputation uh, among businesses, it's going to be very difficult to, to bring those in. But, um, you know, I do think that we need to we need to, to make those overtures. We need to change how we have a, a outlook in town. Um, I do agree with the civil discourse conversation that that, that Ms. Arts had, uh, you know, saying that we really need to work on that as well and, and work together as a town. But I think the, the last point I'd like to make is that you know change is inevitable, and for those people who are constantly opposing uh, new business in town, we have to think of this and say. How do we want this to, to play out? I, I would prefer these changes to happen on our terms rather than out of That's desperate. Right. And if we don't do something soon, the situation will be desperate and we will have to do something. We'll be forced into it. Thank you very much. And we'll now go to our next question. And this question, we will start with Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker, in every community uh, running the school system during the pandemic, is a serious, difficult, and critical issue. Norton currently has plans to open schools in a hybrid manner. This affects not just students and parents, but the entire community, given the nature of COVID-19. Do you support the current plan? And what else would you like to see done throughout the town to help maintain services and prevent the spread of the virus? So that's that's the bombshell question, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, you had to throw the, the hard one in at this point, right? 
Uh, so as I've, I've said before, um, you know, I, I think that the, the school, uh, school board and the school administration were given a, a virtually impossible task. Um, you know, there was no way that whatever situation or solutions they came up with were going to please everyone. Uh, and, and that's, uh, that's borne out in what I'm, in what I'm hearing. There's, there's lots of different opinions. Um, it's, it's, it's easy for me to have, you know, to make statements, but, you know, full, the full disclosure, I don't have any children. So it's, you know, it's, it's easy for me to say, um, you know, one thing or another, but it really comes down to the parents and the teachers. Um, I know there's a lot of concern out there about going back. Um, and on the flip side of that, there's, there's families that don't really have any other choice, but to, to, to go back. So, um, I would never would never want to or be so arrogant as to you know second guess the, the decisions that the school board made and the school administration made. I applaud them for all the work that they put in. Um, in terms of you know making sure that we continue to stay healthy as an, uh, as a community, um, I think we have to be commonsensical. There's CDC guidelines that have been put out. Uh, I think you know when I'm, I'm out and about, I, I always wear a mask, um, and I, I know that most other people do too. Uh, there have been some recent situations where uh, you know, some insults were slung in terms of masks, mask wearing and so on, that I think are, are unfortunate and, and uninformed, to say the least. Um, but I think that's the way that we're going to be able to beat this as a society is, uh, you know, follow those guidelines and, and do what's responsible. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Uh, Mrs. Arts, same question to you. In every community, Running the school system during the pandemic is a serious, difficult, and critical issue. Norton currently has plans to open schools in a hybrid manner. Uh, this affects not just students and parents, but the entire community, given the nature of COVID-19. Do you support the current plan? And what else would you like to see done throughout the town to help the spread of the virus? Um, I agree 100% with Norton. Um, Mr. Parker said, um, having three kids in the school system, um, so I'm invested in what is the outcome. Um, there is no one size fits all answer, and you can't, can't accommodate everyone right where they're at. Um, this has been challenging, and I applaud the volunteers and the school committee and the superintendent and all the hours and hours that they spent um, trying to make this work. And we're still you know, we just got our cohorts yesterday or a couple of last, last week, I guess. Um, and, you know, they're still trying. They are, like, you know, working night and day trying to make this work and working in a safe and, um, you know, a safe manner. Um, so I applaud their efforts. Um, you know, in terms of how do we stay safe as a community, um, you know, people just got to be vigilant. We've got to, we've got to come together and, um, you know, nobody knows the answer. Nobody knows where this is going. Um, so the best we can do is listen to the, the experts and, and you know, their advice. Um, and it's been it's been a very trying time as a parent. As a um, my husband's a teacher in Easton, and so I've been seeing it from both angles. Um, but um, if Norton will prevail. I think. Um, the process was really good in terms of um, information gathering and disseminating the information available, um, the meetings, and so I feel that this was a really good, good school group. It was a very tight community, um, so I think we did the best we can. Um, hopefully, if it turns out the way we want it to. I'm just sad there's no sports. <laughs> My husband's a high school football coach, so it's been a very sad. Had a couple weeks in our house. That was right for the, for the kids. Thank you very much, Mrs. Arts. Uh, Mr. Parker, um, anything in form of a rebuttal? Uh, no, nothing really in the form of a rebuttal. I mean, that's it's very unpolitical, right? But um, I'm I'm going to cede my time. I don't really have anything to add. <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, Mrs. Arts, anything you'd like to add? No, no. Okay, I think that's one everybody kind of agrees on there. So that's a that's a good thing. Um, okay, we'll we'll go to the next question and we'll begin this question 
with uh, Mrs. Arts. Mrs. Arts, congratulations. You've just been appointed the unquestioned imperial ruler of Norton for one day, and you can make any changes you want in the town's governmental system or the way things are done. No questions asked. What is the first thing you do and why? Really? That's my question? <laughs> <laughs> I need a little time to think. Um, wow. Um, again, I think that the charming and the wonderful things that I love about Norton community and how um, we're able to pull together um, during a tough time. So maybe I would Sure, maybe I would build that village center. I could do it in a day. Um, it's a tough one. I'm not really sure how I you could one day you could change everything. Um, but I think I would I would build upon, you know, blessing all of the, the work that people have done in terms of how do we build a community, a sense of community more than we have now. And so that sort of blood, you know, sort of um, giving authority for the, the village center to happen, then maybe that's where I would start. Because um, every every town is a place where people can walk around and, and um, not have to jump into a car to go down to the, to the next business or I think that would be important. So that's really, I'll wait for my rebuttal. <laughs> I'll see what Mr. Parker has to say. Yeah, that was a tough question to have to go first on. So, uh, um, Mr. Parker, same question to you. Congratulations. You've just been appointed as the unquestioned imperial ruler of Norton for one day, and you can make any changes you want in the town's governmental system or the way things are done. What is the first thing you do and why? Well, the, the commercial core is a good one, but um, since, since Meg took that one, I'm going to, I'm going to go a different way. So, um, Again, with only one day uh, and you know things kind of going back to normal after that first day, I, I think I'm going to go with a DPW. Um, I know that's part of the, the Charter Commission's recommendation, um, and water has been a problem in this town for many, many, many years. Uh, so uh, my my take on that is that you know we've gotten a lot of lip service from the Water and Sewer Commission. Uh, they've made some unilateral decisions that uh, I don't believe have benefited Norton. I think they uh, made those decisions because it was easier for them and not in the best interest of the town. And I think that moving forward with the DPW, we could have professionals in in that role that are going to have the training uh, and you know the uh, sort of background to make decisions that are, are going to be forward looking again i'm, I'm always about planning and, and looking forward and be able to make those decisions uh for with the, you know the best interests of norton in, in uh, mind um it is a tough question uh because there's a lot of things i would like to change but in, in terms of you know what realistically might happen in that day uh I, i'm going to go with the dpw Very good. Thank you both. And it, you know, now you can go back. Now that you've had time to think about it, yeah. uh, is that anything you'd like to add in the in one minute of rebuttal? Just again, I think it's just really hard. This this town is you know it's, it's grown so large, um, and we're, we're pretty much based all on volunteers. Um, and to Mr. Parker's point, you know, there's certain expertise in certain areas that I think we do need to move in um, more of a you know, professional manner in terms of how we're governing ourselves and not rely just on elected volunteers. I think, um, you know, that's a tough spot. And I do agree the water because if I have one more yellow tub, I'm going to need it. Trying to unmute myself. There, can you hear me now? Mr. Parker, back to you. Anything you'd like to add in one minute? 
Uh, I think the, the only thing that I would add is, um, you know, just a, again on the water issue, you know, it's been a challenging time. Uh, the water filtration plant is is online, um, and that certainly is improving things, um, but it may not be the cure-all, and I think people need to be aware of that. We've, we've had so many years of minerals and sediment in the water that, you know, our, our pipes are probably, probably have a pretty good coating of those on there, so we may still see some brown water for, for a little while. Uh, and we may have to, to take some additional remedial action. I, I know people don't want to hear that, and, and I don't want to, to hear it either, but, um, uh, you know, I think it's something that we need to be prepared for uh, and need to think about. Thank you very much. And we'll now go to our next question, and this question we will start with Mr. Parker. And this may be now a little repetitious, but this was the order I had the questions in. So. You know, candidates, that I have to ask you about the water situation directly. Uh, there are still parts of the town getting brown water. <clears throat> the water machine at Town Hall has been disconnected, then connected again, and the discussion over it seems to have been never ending. Uh, the water main project continues to be several million dollars over budget. Uh, what is your opinion of how this department and this resource is being managed? And as a select board member, what can you do to help these problems, Mr. Park? So, I think it's been poorly managed, to be to be quite frank. Um, you know, in the as I mentioned in in my uh, last answer, you know, lots of unilateral decisions, lots of lip service. Um, you know, I know that people are very frustrated because they feel that you know the uh, responses that they get from the Water Sewer Commission are very dismissive, um, and you know. This is a, a board and commission that's supposed to be working for the, the residents of Norton and, and the, the residents don't feel that they're getting the respect and the responses that they get. Um, you know, it's a situation that's got to change. And, and as I alluded to in my last answer, I think the DPW is the, the solution to that. I uh, uh, firmly uh, agree that we need that. I think that's one of the changes in the charter that's that's long overdue and, and is absolutely a requirement. Uh, and I think the other thing that we need to do um, as, as, as a select board is to do some investigation on the cost overruns for this. Um, you know, when we were at town meeting, uh, Mr. Gouveia, you were very um, eloquent and adamant about the, the poor management, the, uh, at least what you saw as poor management. Uh, and the cost overruns, and we're now at twice what the, the estimated cost was supposed to be. I, I want to know where that money went, um, and you know, running into some extra ledge doesn't cut it for me as an excuse. I want to, I want to know what's going on there, uh, and, and get a better explanation from that. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Ox. Same question uh, to you. You kind of knew I was going to have to ask about the directly about the water situation. There are still parts of the town getting brown water. The water machine at Town Hall has been disconnected, then connected again, and the discussion over it seems to be never ending. The water main project continues to be several million dollars over budget. What is your opinion of how that department and that resource is being managed? And as a select board member, what can you do to help solve these problems? Um, I actually 100% agree with um, Mr. Parker on this. Um, I mean, it's an embarrassment that we're in a, a town in 2020. Um, as long as we, as long as I've been here for 18 years, we've had groundwater issues. And I know it goes back even further than that. Um, so I, I applaud the, the Charter Commission and I think we think we need a Department of Public Works. And, um, and I think we need to hold people accountable. And that's a disgrace. Um, you know, millions in overhype of, uh, you know, over expending, uh, expenditures. Um, so I agree. I think this is um, this is a big issue. Water is the basic uh, necessity. Um, and I've heard you know, from many people that they would never go to Norton because of the ground water issues. Um, and again, it, it's a shame that it's gone on as long as it has. Um, I heard that the water treatment facility is helping, um, but we've all talked about, you know, with the pipes being as bad as they have been. Um, that discussion is going to have to happen. It, it just wasn't a one size fits all. So um, I'm in full agreement. We, we gotta we gotta fix this. 
Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Parker, anything you'd like to add in, in a minute? Uh, so yeah, I guess the last thing I would say is, you know, in, in addition to what I said before, is that you know, as a member of the select board, I'm going to be working hard to you know, do outreach and, and make sure that people understand the benefits of the new charter. I'm going to work hard to try and get that passed. Um, I, I again agree with with what um, Mrs. Hart said. Uh, you know, our neighborhood. There's 22 houses in our in our neighborhood. Our development, um, and I'd say in the 10 years that I've lived here. 60% turnover in our neighborhood, and the reason, almost without fail, is groundwater. Uh, you know, we're we're losing residents because of it, and and as she mentioned, you know, there are people that are saying, I would never move to Norton because of it. So, uh, you know, it's it's it, it's a disgrace and an embarrassment, and and if we want to really have any kind of standing as a town in, in the general vicinity. Um, you know, we need to take care of that so that people will consider Norton um, on its merits and not just because of that law. Thank you. And Mrs. Ides, anything you'd like to add in uh, one minute rebuttal? Just again, I mean, that as a revenue in Norton and paying taxes and a lot of them, um, the fact that we're also paying to bring our own water in or build your own water filtration system. Um, that, that needs to stop. And so I think um, I too, as um, if elected, would, it's a, it's a priority and we got to think about how we're going to fix this. Um, and it's not going to take, you know, it's going to take a lot of people to, to really own up to where the issues were in the past and how are we going to move forward. But the answer can't just be well, that's the way, the way it's always been. Um, we got to fix this. Thank you very much. And we will now, despite your protestations and complaints, I'm afraid I must say that this question now is going to be the last question that we have. Uh, and please don't beg, you know, you know, the, the, you know, regardless of what you say, this is going to be the last question. Um, and we will start this question with Mrs. Art. Um, our state budget is going to be very tight given the tremendous costs of fighting COVID-19. The federal budget does not currently appear to be designed to give much relief in that way to states. That's going to pass a very he heavy financial burden down to the cities and towns, especially towns like Norton. It will be difficult just to maintain level services in areas like education and public safety, you know, fire protection, police protection uh, in the next year or two. If aid does not come from the state or federal government, would you consider an override to maintain local services? Say maintain um, level services. Um, I certainly don't want to be you know, uh, getting rid of the fire department or you know, uh, taking away from the police force. Um, and trust me, as a parent paying user fees and everything else that I'm doing, it, it's, it's going to become unbearable for parents to be able to afford public school. Um, so I'm not, I'm not saying I'm opposed to an override, but I'm also saying I hope that we can think about all this back to let's fix the, the, the economic, the business development. Let's do some real hard research and figure out how can we bring businesses back to Norton. That's where we need to bring some of the revenue from that. We can't just keep having overrides. Um, we're going to lose, we're going to lose lots of town people. They can't keep affording, um, you know, more taxes. Um, but again, I say that cautiously because I know how dire the, the economy may look, looks, <laughs> but may look um, in the next year or two. Um, and it's pretty scary. Um, so I, I, I hope that that's not where we end up. Um, I hope we can be a little bit more creative. Um, but I recognize that that may be the only option. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Parker, same question to you. Our state budget is going to be very tight given the tremendous cost of fighting COVID-19. The federal budget does not currently appear to be designed to give much relief to the states in that regard. 
that is going to pass a very heavy financial burden down to cities and towns, especially towns like Norton. It will be difficult just to maintain level services in areas like education and public safety, police and fire in the next year or two. If aid does not come from the state or our federal government, would you consider an override specifically to maintain local services? So I would, I would hope too that we could be creative and find a way around that. But the reality is, is we've been being creative with our budget for years. So, you know, uh, earlier when you asked about if I was king for a day, what I would change, what I thought about having the answer be, uh, you know, get, get as much money from somewhere as possible, but obviously that's, that's not going to work. Um, so, you know, we, we have this budget challenge, uh, and, and it is going to be tough. Um, bringing in extra businesses again economic development is is something that i'm a, a big proponent of and i hope that we would be able to get moving on that pretty quickly and sort of take a, a, a nip that in the bud if at all possible but if the econ economy excuse me takes a, a real downturn it may be difficult to bring in those businesses in order to do that um the reality is is that you know over the years we've scrimped and saved and done everything in our power to to quote unquote live within our means and if we take a serious hit uh, because of COVID, we may not be able to do that. Um, I, you know, I don't unilaterally jump on the on the override bandwagon, but um, this could be a potentially serious situation. And I think we would need to look carefully at it. I wouldn't want to jump into something that was just, you know, throw money at the budget and, and you know try to pass an override. Uh, we would need to be able to to look at it and and you know make some some hard serious decisions about it. Um, but, but like Ms. Arts, you know, if we can avoid it, I would, I would go that route, but, um, it's going to really depend on how bad the economy gets, uh, and, and how badly, uh, our, our funding from the state and federal level takes care. Thank you. Mrs. Arts, anything you'd like to add and last chance for rebuttal here? Um, again, I, I think we're, we're definitely on the same page on this. Um, I do think one wonderful thing being in Norton is, you know, I talked with this um, part of my campaigning, but the kindness that people have shown. And so look at, you know, you talk about basic services and, and the legislators that have been providing these meals and all that. So I think um, aside from being creative, I also think we've got some real incredible people in town that you know, hopefully will pull together in, in a time of crisis. So again, um, no easy, no easy decision. But. Thank you very much. And Mr. Parker, your last rebuttal of the evening. Uh, you know, I would just say that I, I agree with that. Uh, as I mentioned in my opening statement, there's, I've seen some incredible things happening in, in the last month and people's generosity has been overwhelming. Um, you know, with the, the meal program, we've been able to, to provide over a hundred thousand meals to people, uh, in, in this COVID period when, you know, they may have gone hungry if we weren't able to do that. Um, I know that, that Beth Rossi of Council of Aging is doing everything she can to make sure that, that people are, are staying afloat during this tough time. So, um, you know, I, I agree. Norton's an incredible place. We've got some very generous people, and, and uh, you know, I hope that we can continue that. Um, I'm not sure that would be enough uh, in, in, in a critical economic crisis, however. Thank you very much, candidates. Thank you for answering the questions. And that will bring us now to our closing statements. And in accordance with our coin flip, if I can read my own notes, who's going first here? Is that, uh, that would be me. That Mr. Parker is going first. So we'll get, uh, Mr. Parker will be the first to do his closing statement. Well, thank you. Um, as we, as we wrap up, I want to say thank you once again to the Norton Media Center for, for hosting this. Uh, Sandy Allerhead for her incredible tech support here. Uh, Mr. Govea for being a moderator, and of course, Meg Arts for taking the time to discuss the issues. I especially want to thank the citizens of Norton for watching the debate to learn more about your candidates for select board. It's important to be informed and, and uh, you know, have information going into that election. As I mentioned earlier, Norton's a great town. Uh, we can discuss all day what we love about it, but elections are about issues, and we have a lot of important ones to address here in the very near future. The town hall and the senior center are very real needs for us. Um, as I mentioned, there may be more work involved to fix the water. We don't know yet. Uh, the charter is going to be a hot topic for the next six or seven months. 
Um, it's going to be up to the select board to guide those discussions, and they won't be easy discussions. This is serious stuff that affects over 20,000 people. When I announced my candidacy, I said I wanted to help the town move forward, and I would put the work in to provide the necessary leadership. Since that announcement, I've spoken with each member of the select board, asked questions, and learned more about the issues at hand. I've spoken with members of various committees in town to discuss and understand the challenges facing them. In that time, I've attended every single select board meeting, as well as multiple meetings of the planning board, the finance committee, water and sewer commission, and others. I did that not just because I think it's important to have a good grasp on the issues, but I want to know how the boards and the committees here run here in town. The select board does not operate in a vacuum, and the interaction of all these boards helps determine how the town works. Uh, I did that so that uh, at, after the election, uh, if I win, I can hit the ground running. Um, in the last few weeks, the select board held a public mirror, uh, excuse me, hearing about the town hall and select uh, senior center. Uh, the charter commission had two public hearings on the proposed charter. Uh, I attended those hearings. I stated my opinions, and I was taking in the comments from others in town. I'm taking that promise about putting in work seriously. From the beginning, I've been stating my positions on issues, talking to people to hear their views and answering their questions. I posted those answers publicly on social media to get the word out as far as, far as possible. I want people to know where I stand, and I want people to ask questions and share their views. And I did all this because although I have opinions, issues have different sides. People in town are going to have different takes on, on everything. I want to understand what those are. As I said at the beginning, I don't have all the answers, and sometimes hearing a different point of view can make all the difference. There have been many times when I've gotten a new bit of information on something and it's changed my opinion, so it's important to, to hear all those sides. If elected, I pledge to serve with an open mind, listen to my Norton neighbors, and make decisions for the greater good of Norton and all of its residents. I want to thank you for your time, and uh, when you cast your vote, either whether by mail or in person, I hope you'll uh, cast that vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parker. And our last closing statement to wind up our night will be from Mrs. Art. Thank you, Bill. Um, I, I do want to just say thank you to everyone um, for watching, um, but also for being part of the process. Um, and I want to thank the Norton Media Center for, for uh, providing this, this forum for us. Um, and, you know, this, this is what makes Norton wonderful, um, is that we have such an eclectic group of people that want to get involved. Um, you know, I, I'm just so grateful the, that the COVID-19 actually afforded me this opportunity. Um, you know, I've lived now in Norton longer than I've lived in any town. Um, and I've lived a lot of different places. Um, I've raised three children here. Um, I had my mom's funeral at St. Mary's Church in Norton. Um, this community means a lot to me. Um, I'm not in it just to um, come in do my thing and then leave. Um, I want this to be a town that my children want to share their friends at where they grew up. Um, and I had that growing up in other places. So, um, you know, I don't know all that's going on and uh, all the intricacies of the Northern um, town government. Um, like I said, it's my first 18 years here have been really challenging in terms of my professional life, balancing with my personal life. Um, I'm excited to get to know more. I'm excited to um, you know, learn more about the issues. Um, what I think I can really bring to the table is, you know, I have spent so much time um, professionally in leadership roles, um, in decision-making roles, in thoughtful planning roles, um, and I think I could do a really good job for Norton. Um, I'm not, um, I have no pre-existing, you know, feelings about um, certain things. I'm coming in with an open mind. This is, like I said earlier on, this is not about, you know, this is not, I'm not doing this for the arts family. The arts family, fine. The kids are all, you know, doing their thing. Uh, my husband's, you know, up and running with, um, you know, the, Football uh, program here. Um, I want to do it. I want. I want to help the town. I want to um, give back in a way that I haven't been able to before. Um, so I hope you will come out on September 12th um, and vote at the at the new location, right, Bill, at the Norton Middle School. Um, 
and, uh, and and I want the opportunity to to make this town even greater than it is. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Arts. <clears throat> and with that, that will complete our debate for this evening. I would like to very much thank our candidates, uh, Meg Arts and Joe Parker, uh, for giving of their time to run for office and to give you the chance to hear their thoughts and positions. Running for office is not easy, folks, and it's particularly hard in a time when you can't even go and knock on doors or do anything like that. So congratulations to both of you for putting yourself out there and our sincere thanks for, for doing that. And we wish you both good luck on September 12th. I would also like to thank Jason Benjamin and Shane and everyone at Norton Media Center for doing the real work and making this entire production possible. Without Norton Media Center, the voters could not have had this opportunity to hear from their candidates directly. And thank you to Sandy Allerhead for her great help in running the Zoom meeting and preventing me from muting everybody at the wrong time and doing all those things that I no doubt would have done. Uh, lastly, we remind everyone that election day is Saturday, September 12th. That is a change from the old Monday or Tuesday and the polling place has changed. It will be at the Norton Middle School and not the high school as in the past. The polls will only be open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. I believe, I think I have that right. Uh, and if you are unable to vote in person, you may obtain ballots in advance from the town clerk's office Please see the links or call the office uh, on the town website to find out what you need to do to do that. We all understand that the stress and pressure on people these days as we deal with the ongoing effects of COVID-19 on all our lives, but we hope you can find a way to vote in this very important local election. It always amazes me, and I know I say it every time, but it amazes me how people will come out and vote for president and then how few will come out to vote for their select board and other local offices. Your local government plays a much more direct role in your life as a citizen. If you don't believe that, then the next time someone proposes something in your neighborhood, or the train line is coming close to your home, or your municipal sewer connection is costing you a fortune, call the president. Then call your select board member or your planning board member let me know who gets back to you sooner and has more of an impact in helping you out. Your local government plays an important role in your life. It is your duty and your responsibility to take an active part in choosing the people who run it. Please do so safely and please all stay healthy. Remember, your vote is perhaps more important these days than ever before. But frankly, if you don't vote, don't complain. For Norton Media Center, I'm Bill Gouveia. Thank you and happy and safe voting.